Hi guys! Welcome to my video for the Hugh C. Hyde Reading Series channel. I'm going to explore one of the thematic elements in Chris Mazza's latest novel, Yet to Come, by cooking chicken a la king with dumplings. What does this dish have to do with a book? Well, in the novel, food plays an important role in the life of one of the main characters. I'm going to be making one of the meals discussed, uh, chicken a la king, which is a weird food dish that I never heard of. All right, let's get started. So chicken a la king is basically like chicken gravy. So you start by making the roux, which means that you need to get your butter First thing I'm gonna do is chop onions. Now that my butter is all melted, I'm adding garlic and onions and mushrooms, which I bought three slices. Next is half and half, or just heavy whipping cream, like I'm using. Now it's time to prepare our vegetables. book. Al and his wife's relationship is tumultuous and problematic for a lot of reasons, but one of the biggest mainstays of their relationship, and particularly Cal's experience of it, is his uh, distaste for intimacy, which his wife does not share. <laughs> but throughout the book, he avoids And he has a lot of conversations in his head with the woman that he's in love with, so it's, you know, all of his time he's imagining it. But he, like, constantly is reaffirming his fidelity to her. Uh, but later in the book, at the point in which this particular meal is made, Chicken a la King, Cal comes to a realization that the dependence he feels on his wife food and particularly the quality of her cooking and the, the sumptuous narration regarding the food really reflects just how much energy and, and importance is placed on food for Cal. He realizes that he has been more involved in his marriage than he had previously thought. Despite it not revolving around physical intimacy, there's a physical aspect to the consumption of food that his wife prepares for him. Rosemary. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Par 
parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Not intentional. That's so fun. That's amazing. A lot of the recipes that I looked at suggested that you buy rotisserie chicken, like pre-shredded and stuff, and that sounded really easy to me. But I will say, I think that the character in Yet to Come would not have done this. She probably cooked the chicken herself. is an exercise in watching what happens when people make every wrong decision for their own happiness. And for Cal, that means that after he misses out on an opportunity with the woman that he perceives to be the love of his life, he moves in with a different woman with two children of her own and a whole host of issues. And makes a life with her, even though he doesn't really like her. And it's tragic and sad, and for a lot of the book, you can almost feel sorry for the woman, but really you feel sorry for Cal. Uh, but the only moderately positive element of their relationship revolves around the way that she cooks for him. And so the meals that she provides and the time that she spends in the kitchen occupy not only an important place in their relationship, but an important place in the book. Okay, so now it's time to start forming my dumplings, which I know you can often just do with a spoon, but I want them to be even. So I'm going to divide my dough a few times. In the book, the descriptions of food stand out as the primary subject of the book's most descriptive language. In this way, Maza masterfully develops the nuanced complexity in the relationship between Cal and his wife. Meanwhile, the dumplings had puffed up in the steam to make floating islands of biscuit and thick gravy. She'd put flecks of parsley in the dough. Softened mushrooms had a heady sheen. Onions and celery were translucent, infused with chicken broth. Similarly, he was swathed in a deep fragrance of rosemary and sage. His heart throbbed in his gut. 